Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about my new VL60 Dual Zone Refrigerator Freezer by Iceco. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and if you've been watching my channel for a little while then you know that I already have a refrigerator freezer for my car. It is able to, it's 38 quarts and I'm able to set it up as either freezer or refrigerator. I've been happy with that other one. But Iceco reached out to me and said, hey, we would like for you to review our product. So they sent me a link to this. <laughs> it's, it's a monster. And they said, we'll give it to you, just check it out. And so how do I say no to that? So full disclosure, this is a paid promotion. I received this unit in exchange for an honest review. So as you can see, the thing is huge. Here it is in front of my car, and I'll show you how it fits here in just a moment. So the this dual zone unit, uh, you can see it's got two doors on it, a nice sturdy hasp, and I can set up the unit to either be freezer, 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 refrigerator, or refrigerator, refrigerator. So I can set the two zones independently and it's, it's very sturdy, it's made of steel, so it's a little on the heavy side. And so the unit it's, is the VL60, it's 60 liters or 63 quarts. And the thing that's interesting about the way it's split up, now it's, it, it appears to be split directly in half, but you have to look and see that this bottom section here is the compressor, which is a very high quality compressor by C-Cop. Uh, fantastic warranty, super durable and they work very well in the heat, although I haven't tested it in the heat just yet. Of the 63 quarts, more than 38 of the quarts are right here. So my other unit is a 38 quart unit and it, its contents can fit in one half of this unit, which I think is fantastic. <laughs> so it, it gives me all kinds of options. So what happens is the stuff that I normally fill up with frozen goods in my other whole unit and then maybe I'll sprinkle a few refrigerated items on top. I can put all of my frozen stuff in one side and still have room left over and then put my refrigerated goods in the other side. I will get to that in just a minute. Uh, let's see, operating range. It can, it can cool from between zero degrees and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And, or my other unit can go a little bit colder, but who, who does that? And all it does is just run continuously and it'll sack a battery pretty fast. So I, I'm okay with zero degrees. In fact, I think I have it set for zero degrees. Right now it's sitting at five and 27. That's not where I have it set, but I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. The unit comes with both the AC and DC power plugs. And so here's my AC power plug. I have never even unwrapped it. It sits just like that all of the time. This here is a, uh, a spare power plug from my other unit. The unit is actually plugged into my car right now using the supplied 12 volt plug. But realistically, shh, don't tell anybody, these are OS compatible. And so I, I'm, I'm using their plug to bring the unit out here. But in the car, I actually plug it into another unit, another plug that's already been cut and spliced into my system. Test on your own to make sure what you have is cross compatible. That's the disclaimer. Don't blame me if you cut a wire and mess up your stuff. So it's working for me just fine. So enough on the plugs. Let's take a look at the, uh, at the settings here. And so if we take a, a deeper look here, here is the power button. And press and hold to turn the unit on or off. So there is off. If I press and hold, and it'll turn it back on. Another option here is to turn on only half of the unit for to save power. I don't know how to do that, but it is an option. You can see my, uh, my voltage and then, so there's my, you press mode once, there's my, my left side setting, there's my right side setting, and then there's what they actually say. So you're probably asking yourself, why is that so far off? So plus or minus five degrees is acceptable on these but this one is way off. And so that's a little confusing, right? I know I was kind of confused when I first started experimenting with this. Uh, I, it, it is reading 27 degrees, but that's 27 degrees at the sensor. Actually inside the fridge is maybe a little bit warmer 
and my fridge is empty right now so it it does work better when there are products inside the fridge that it's trying to uh, cool or freeze so keep that in mind you may have to tinker a little bit i have place some remote sensors in the bottom of my fridge so that I can uh, monitor things from the driver's seat. That way I know if I need to make some adjustments. Something I forgot to say earlier, or I might have misspoke, was after the settings, there's Max or Echo. And so I haven't, when I first discovered the temperature disparities, I thought it might have been because I was in Echo mode. And so then I moved it to max, and that's where I've been running it. This unit stays off a lot, and so when I turn it on, it's because I'm on the way to the grocery store and I want it to get the temperature as quickly as possible. It's running off of the car's power while I'm driving down the road, and so I'm not worried about being economical. And so I just leave it in max, but I will do a round of testing with it in max and echo, and show you the difference in battery endurance and then the other thing here is the l that is where the uh, uh where the battery preservation is i can either leave it high medium or low and so basically what this is is the battery voltage at forced shutdown so i leave mine at the lowest possible setting which means that the refrigerator will let the battery deplete as to its lowest voltage before it shuts off and, and that's because I'm running a lithium battery and I, I can afford to just let it run to L. And if it shuts off, it shuts off, but I don't ever run it that deep. I'm not terribly concerned about it. This car gets driven frequently enough to where I'm going to get a charge on the battery. Or I can just turn off the fridge because I don't always need it. So here is the power input section. So it'll take uh, 115 or 240, depending on where you live. 50 or 60 hertz, depending on where you live. And here is the DC input. And so mine is feeding 12 volts, but it will take 24 as well. So some RVs out there have 24 volt systems. And I think some over the road trucks have 24 volt systems as well. And uh, solar generators and things like that. So it will take a 24 volt input. Uh, very well ventilated on all around the compressor inside. And then very sturdy handles. When you're dealing with uh, a unit that is this heavy, you have to have sturdy handles, and this one certainly has them. The hinges on the lid are also very sturdy. Uh, super heavy duty, I, I really like them, and I, I can't imagine them giving me any trouble. So if we go inside, so this here is the smaller side. Uh, you have a, a light on each one with a switch. The baskets are included. So you might notice, uh, I've got, uh, there's not really eggs in there, I was test fitting an egg carton to see if it would fit. Most of you are going to use this side as your freezer because most people have the smaller side as the freezer, the larger side for refrigeration. But I, I'm doing it just the other way around because I buy a lot of frozen products. So not so much refrigerated goods. And so you can see that, okay, the basket is removable, which makes it convenient to get in there and reach things. And this is more than large enough to hold a dozen eggs. And if you go through a lot of eggs, you can stack, I think I fit three, definitely two will fit, three might. So you can fit two dozen eggs under there and then the basket will sit right on top and you're good to go. And to be honest, I don't really use the basket. I might use the basket on this side, but the other one I don't because it's too big. And I will show you why here in just a minute why I don't use that. So if I close that, did you see the temperature sensor down there? So there's that little white thing is my temperature sensor. I have one in each side so that I can monitor things in the car. And then over here on the other side, you can see that that is quite a large space. Another light and switch, another temperature sensor, and then the basket lifts out. And here is a very handy chart to show you ideal temperature settings for whatever it is that you're gonna put in here. So uh, uh, meat to zero degrees. So I keep mine set for zero degrees. I've never heard that seafood can be kept warmer, but I keep it all at zero degrees when I'm freezing. And then uh, prepared food off over here on my refrigerator side, I do keep it at 37. And then if I'm not carrying any perishables, I will set it to 45 or 50 
and really the the battery lasts forever when it's set to 45 or 50 degrees because the compressor hardly runs at that point. So uh, here, while we got these baskets, let me show you something real quick. There's the physical difference between uh, this is for my entire other fridge and this is just for one side of the Iceco fridge. So super, super satisfied with the difference in capacity between the two. Now again, I don't use the baskets, so uh, it's not like I value these baskets. But one thing that the baskets are really good for, I discovered with the other fridge, and it's got to be the same with this, is depending on your outside temperature, you might have a problem with things freezing in your refrigerator when it's cool outside. Using the baskets, what I have discovered is it helps keep your product from making direct contact with the interior of the fridge. So that should keep things that aren't supposed to be frozen from freezing. That's my thought anyway. Now before I put this in my car and show you how I use it, uh, I got to mention that Iceco also sent me a cover with this. This particular unit, the way it is marketed and sold, it comes with an insulating cover. and. I'm not going to show it to you because it's to me it's a little cumbersome. I put it on and I checked it out, but what I didn't like about it, maybe this is feedback for Iceco, I don't even know if it's possible to do this, but it, it fits the bottom very well. It gives you access to the controls. It leaves the vents open so you can so the unit can breathe, but it has just one top. And so in order to get into one side of the refrigerator, I have to unzip the whole lid pull it off and then open, get in, close. It's, it's more hassle to me than I think it's worth. And that might not be true in a really hot environment and it might not be true if you don't use the fridge very much. And it's probably not too much of a hassle if you are in an application that is tall enough for you to be able to open and close the unit very easily. A lot of people will put their fridges on a slide out and once you slide it out of the vehicle, you have free and open access to the inside of the fridge and that insulated cover might not be such a hassle. But in my application, it's a hassle. I'll show you why here. Check this out. Let me go ahead and put this unit in the car and we'll give you some feedback on this. Like I said, the unit is not terribly heavy, but because it's so large, it is a little awkward to deal with. Plus, I'm working around these saw horses. Okay, so here is the unit as it fits right inside the trunk. And so it fits just fine. And as you can see, I think it'll close the door with it sitting right there. Nope, I gotta push it in just a little farther. All right, so there it is. Oh, I've got a, I forgot I have a, I have a fire extinguisher right inside here. So if I remove the fire extinguisher, I can bring the unit closer to the door. So what you might not be able to see is the unit is sitting about here on the glass. And so it doesn't block an awful lot of my view, but it does block some view. And it also, because of its size, it kind of makes having a slide out impractical. There is a lip here that it's about two inches, right? So the unit is sitting flat here and this is raised about an inch and a half to two inches. And so I need to build a platform or I would need to build a platform to raise this up that far. And then the slide rail would maybe be another two inches. So then the platform would be up even higher and that would put the unit four inches higher than it is right now. So if you look at this, the clearance here that I have to see is about eight inches. So that's not very much room, even without the unit being elevated another four inches. So I'd have this little four inch slither of window that I could see out if I left a unit back here in the back where it is uh, alleged to be more accessible. And on top of that, with it sitting here, I can only open the door that far. So how far is that? A quick measurement puts me at nine and a half inches. So that's a nine and a half inch opening. And so you can see why I don't use the baskets. I wouldn't be able to get them in and out of there anyhow. But instead of having the unit here, what I have chosen to do is slide it deeper into the car. Look at that nice sturdy latch. I like that. It's a good sturdy latch. 
So check this out. I'm going to put the unit further into the car and show you the difference. Now, if this was full, it'd be a whole lot more difficult, but it's not so bad when it's empty. Just shove it on through there. Pull this other cable through. I don't need it. There we go. I'm plugged in. While I'm here maneuvering this, I will say that one of the things that I don't like about it is there are no rubber feet on the bottom. And so if you have carpet in your vehicle, the unit will slide. So I am going to uh, get some uh, self-adhesive rubber feet, put them on the bottom. There are some, some spots on the bottom that are just made for rubber feet. So that's what I'm going to use. And I will show you here in a second. I do use ratcheting tie down straps to hold this into place. So anyway, two things that we can spot right away is with it here, the door does open more because the ceiling is deeper in here. So how high does that door open now? 14 inches. Okay, so another benefit of having the unit farther forward now, as I open this hatch, I have complete access to my cargo back here. I, if I need to come in this way to open the doors and get to them, I can. But you just saw that I can basically come right in here, open the door, and then reach in and get whatever I need. I mean, I can even stick my head in here like this. And so there's, there's plenty of room. It's just now I'm not going to be able to get a turkey in and out of here like this. And so there are limitations. But I have fit some fairly large items in there. But the benefit, the other benefit of having the unit way up there in the front, can you see my rear view mirror? Well, with the unit push all the way up there like that, the, the view through the rear view mirror, I can hardly even see the fridge because it is pushed up under the view. So I can see out the entire back window with the fridge pushed forward like that. So keep that in mind, even in an SUV, if you're trying to figure out how to maximize your visibility, this is a good option, pushing everything forward. So what have I left out of this review so far? Uh, during the winter, I can't give the fridge a complete shakedown because it's not going to be tested that well in the winter when it's cold out. Temperature is not going to be very stable. I can't really test battery endurance. I do have a lithium secondary battery in the car. I can't test any of that stuff because the fridge is not running in the zone where most people are going to use them. So I think in June or July, maybe even August, I will do a follow up during the hottest part of our year because what this car is pre presenting to the fridge that a lot of I'll say overlanders do not necessarily have is my car is parked a lot. Overlanders are driving a lot. Okay, they park too, but you know, they're out in the wilderness with the wind is down and maybe, maybe their interiors don't get as hot as what I am going to subject the unit to. Cause I'm a city dweller, right? So when this thing's in the car, the windows are up, it gets really hot in the car. And with my other unit, I could see at what temperature inside the car that the, ter that the fridge couldn't quite keep up. So I will give you another video, a follow-up in July or August. I am going to put this thing through its paces in the heat. I'm going to tell you what it does to my battery. I'm pretty confident that when I'm set up for either side being a freezer, it's going to suck the battery dry pretty quickly. That's just what I think. I'm also going to loan the unit to a friend who's going to put it in his RV and he wants to test it because he's interested in buying one of these for himself. So I'm going to give him a test run and I'll be able to tell you what he thinks of it. So stick around, check back for my follow up. So initial review today, follow up review in July. We'll say July. One more thing about the refrigerator. I'm not going to, I didn't want to bore you with an unboxing, unboxing. <laughs> Those, those are so boring. But, but I have to mention it about this fridge. It shows up, uh, you know, it, they, they bring it on a, uh, uh, on a dolly, so it gets tilted and everything. So that, that reminds me, when they deliver it, the fridge will have been transported and tilted and put on the wrong sides and everything. Let the thing sit for 24 hours before you plug it in and start using it because all that refrigerant has to settle back into where it belongs because it's probably been tossed around in every which way. But I got the box. It, the box is huge and it's got two straps going around it. 
Well, to get into the box, all you got to do is cut the two straps and the lid just lifts right off. That was the easiest unboxing I've ever seen. Two straps, lift, done. Fabulous unboxing experience. So keep up the good work on that, Iceco. Check back in uh, for my follow-up video where I will have subjected this thing to heat and an awful lot more use. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care.